Fantastic. I think we've got uh, probably most people here. Um, we've got about 20 or so on the call today. So fantastic. Thank you so much for um, for joining today. Um, so I'm going to go through um, a topic which I'm genuinely passionate about, which is how to write the ultimate website brief that your agency will love. Um, so let's uh, let's delve into it just before we um, get into the, the kind of main part of it. Uh, just a couple of things to be aware of. Um, so we are recording this webinar, so you'll receive uh, a link to the recording and slide deck um, in the next day or two. Um, whilst we go through this session, if you could um, kindly just stay muted and we will have a time at the end for you to um, ask some questions. Uh, we'll do that live, so um, please feel free throughout the webinar to put any questions in the chat um, or you can kind of unmute yourself at the end and um, throw a question at me and I'll be happy to answer it. Um, also, just to touch on the fact that I'm going to talk about this topic broadly, so I fully appreciate the fact that um, you know, writing a website brief might be different for different organisations, but I'm going to try and keep this general so that um, it applies to most people on the call. Um, and finally, just get involved. So um, please use the hashtag webboxwebinar across any social channel um, and tell us what you thought of the webinar uh, and post your pictures and just get involved in the conversation. So over the next kind of 45 minutes or so, um, I'm going to go through the why, who and how uh, of writing a website brief. Um, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty about the specific parts that should form part of this brief. Um, and something which I don't think many people touch on is actually how to get the attention of the top agencies. And on, on the flip side, allowing agencies to self-qualify themselves so that it doesn't waste too much of your time. So I'm going to touch on those, which I think are a little bit different from what most people would talk about. Um, finally, I'm going to kind of give you our website brief template. So this is something which going to, we're just going to give away free today so that you can start writing a website brief of your own. Um, and then we're just going to end up with a time for questions. So, um, yeah, hopefully the next 45 minutes will uh, fly by and I'll give you lots of value. So a little bit about me, um, not to get into the, the nitty gritty, but I'm Will, I'm the founder of Webbox. We're a digital agency based here in Cardiff. Um, and do you know what, over the last kind of over 12 years now, um, I've helped and, and worked with clients uh, to define, uh, to write and refine their brief. So I actually love and genuinely enjoy um, sitting down with a, a kind of client and a business um, and actually working out what they need from their website or web application. What does it need to do? How does it need to function? How are you going to measure the success of it? Those things really get me out of bed in the morning and I love doing it. So I hope I, I can kind of bring all of that together today and give you some real nuggets to take away. Um, and also my contact details are there. Feel free to connect with me um, anytime. So let's start with the why. So actually, why write a brief in the first place? Um, I just want to start with the basics because actually um, it might seem obvious to a lot of people, but actually it's not. Um, there are a lot of people that miss out this stage. Um, so it sounds obvious, but first and foremost, you need to outline your requirements. OK, and though a website is not necessarily tangible, so, you know, physically tangible, it is definable and therefore I would encourage you not to be too touchy-feely with a website brief and actually be pragmatic. Actually state what the website should do, how it should function, what the benefits to your organisation are going to be um, and be as factual as you possibly can. So I think you need to outline your requirements first of all. Um, one of the other reasons of actually doing this exercise though is actually to avoid misunderstanding. So. Um, it's unfortunate, but I have heard, you know, many a story where this stage has been missed out um, and further down the road in a project, there is then misalignment um, and misunderstanding between agency and client. Um, so really try to avoid that. So from day one, make sure what you want um, and the objectives of this project are set out really clearly and then spend the time, I really encourage you to do this, spend the time with the agency to really make sure that you're both aligned um, and both parties have understood what needs to be delivered and what will be delivered to you. 
um, before commencing this project. Also, you need to write it because actually you want to attract interest from the top agencies. So do you know what? There are a lot of agencies out there at the moment who won't even entertain a conversation with a client without a brief. Um, so actually, to get some of the top agencies' attentions, you'll need to go with go to them with a brief or some sort of requirements. So if you want to get in front of the best agencies to undertake your project, um, it's another reason why we'd encourage you to write a brief. Something which I, I think a lot of um, you know companies might miss is allowing agencies to self-qualify themselves. So what do I mean by that? So let me pose a scenario to you. You are writing a website brief and uh, it's for a project which has a very critical deadline. And that deadline is, you know, the 5th of January 2021. Um, and that is paramount. That's non-negotiable. It absolutely must be delivered by that date, maybe for, um, you know, to coincide with a PR campaign or whatever it might be. But that date cannot move. Well, there's no point in sending the brief to an agency and having lots of conversations back and forth and building a relationship if actually that agency simply cannot deliver to that deadline. If they have a particular work uh, workload at present and they're not able to deliver it until March, then actually let's not waste your time. Let's allow a, an agency to self-qualify themselves to say, sorry guys, really can't deliver by that date. If it is negotiable, great. If not, sorry, but we'll have to pass. And little things like that just allow agencies to speed up the process for you. Another scenario might be that you have to use a specific web programming language. Again, it might be a non-negotiable, maybe uh, it's come from an IT department um, that it has to be using uh, PHP, for example. Well, there's, again, there's no point sending this brief to an agency that doesn't work with PHP. Um, so allow the agency to self-qualify themselves. And then finally, and this is um, hopefully a little nugget, um, but actually writing a brief and keeping it a little bit open ended allows the agency to demonstrate their creativity, allow them to um, bring their ideas to the table. I think this is a really important part because, you know, you come into an agency uh, for their expertise. You're coming because you know that they've done this time and time again. So allow them to feed back the other way and say, have you thought about doing it this way? Or if you did it that way, you'd get this benefit and allow them to bring their ideas to the table so that um, you can gain ideas and ultimately it'll benefit the overall project. OK, so that is the, the why. Um, the next one I want to start with is who should write the brief. Can I start with a little story? So it always makes me chuckle because, um, you know, a few years ago, we won a tender with a public sector organisation and we had to go through quite a formal procurement process. Um, and because of that, we weren't allowed to actually speak to the, the project team. Everything had to go through this procurement department. So the procurement department had liaised with uh, the project team, apparently, and they'd gathered requirements and written this tender. We submitted our response um, and thankfully we won the tender. I then sat down with the project team and I was really excited to get going and I thought, great, I know exactly what you're looking for because I've analysed your brief and now I'm going to start drilling into some of the details to get to the nitty gritty. And before I could go any further, they said, do you know what? This brief, don't worry about it. Rip it up. Um, they said procurement haven't you know, quite understood our requirements, so can we actually go through this process of, of gathering our requirements and defining them with you? Now, of course, I was happy to do that. Um, it's no problem at all. But you think to yourself, actually, in this instance, the wrong person has actually written the brief. So my, my, my ideal scenario is that maybe a project sponsor or project manager um, or the people involved in the project on the ground, uh, the project team, will have actually written that brief. That works best for agencies because we know then that the brief that we're looking at is directly written by the people who we're going to be working with. Um, and also, I'd also mention the fact that this brief um, ideally would be you know, written by the project team, but actually it's really important 
that you get the sign off on this brief from your senior leadership team um, or, or, or management or, or board, whatever uh, structure you have internally. But it is really important that they sign off to an agency that then shows and demonstrates that actually the company and organisation are serious about undertaking this project. Um, so that's a nice, nice thing for an agency to feel that um, this project is definitely going to go ahead. So that is the who should write the brief. And then finally, I'm going to touch on how. This is something which I think so many uh, companies might actually miss. And I really hope that if you're going to take something away from uh, this webinar today, that actually it becomes how to position the brief. Um, so when you're writing your brief, think about the agencies that are going to be reading it and how they'll actually read it. So what you want to do is get the attention of the most suitable agencies. OK, so what I mean by that is you want to get in your brief in front of the agencies that work with the technologies that you're looking for, have got experience with um, delivering projects like this potentially or not. Um, and there'll be a couple of criteria. And it's really important that you flag these things in the brief so that uh, the right agencies then respond to the brief. Um, Again, this will just save time your end to make sure that you haven't got, you know, 10 agencies responding to you, which um, actually can't deliver the project. Also, I want to touch on um, allowing the agencies to self-qualify themselves. And I want, I want to encourage you to do this in a really um, you know, basic but clear way. So actually, when you use phrases in your brief, such as we want to work with an agency that specialises in X, Y and Z, or on the flip side of that, we want to work with agencies that haven't worked in this sector before because we want fresh ideas. Then that allows the agency to say, yeah, this is a project for me or, or maybe not. Um, and again, maybe the time scale is something which um, allows a, an agency to qualify themselves as well. So I think these are really key things to include because ultimately then you'll make sure that the agencies that res respond to the brief are those that um, can actually undertake the project. And finally, um, one thing I, I've kind of noticed quite a few times um, kind of in, in the years that I've done this is that the brief switch don't necessarily um, excite an agency. Are those that are so restrictive that you feel that you can't add any value. So what do I mean by that? Um, you know, if you've defined exactly what you want to the nth degree and you've gone into the detail of, about technologies and server types that you want it hosted on and exactly what the website should look like um, to the pixel. And if you've gone down to absolutely that nitty gritty detail, um, I think most agencies would probably agree that that doesn't excite them because what an agency wants to do is be creative and it wants to say, have you thought about doing this? Um, can we add value to you by doing that? Um, so actually allow that creativity. It, it's quite nice to uh, to have a, a situation where the organisation appreciates the value that an agency can bring and the agency appreciate the, the sector specific knowledge and experience that the organisation can bring to the party. And if you put those two things together, that's what makes a really powerful client agency relationship. So let's um, let's move on. So. Um, let's get into the nitty gritty about what actually should be part of a website brief, the actual specific elements which make up that document. So if I can start by saying that we all do this, we all, um, uh, you know, kind of assume that someone else knows our company and our sector and, and the buzzwords that we use in our sector. But actually, um, that's just not the case. Um, you know, an agency might look at an engineering firm and have no idea really about what that company does day to day, the buzzwords they use, how they operate, how do they make their money, what do they make most of their money from. And therefore, it's really important that you you start by introducing the company to the agency and start um, is in an elementary way. So give us information about you know you and the company, um, some some of your history. Share your values. So, um, you know, if some of your values are, um, you know, really clear communication um, or the fact that you want to collaborate um, internally and with external companies, they're really important to help you align your company values with the, the values of the agency. 
Tell us a little bit about what makes you unique. Why are you different to uh, competitors or other people doing this? Um, and a little bit about the size of the business and the structure. These are ultimately things which help us get to know you because let's be honest, people buy people and it's all about relationship. So it's really important that you, um, that you kind of have a, a paragraph or several paragraphs in the brief telling us about you um, in, a, in an approachable way. Um, so that's the first part of, uh, of the brief. Second part I want to touch on is um, target audiences. So you're looking for a website or a, or a portal, an application, web application. Um, we need to know as agencies what your target audience is. Um, you know, the website can't be all things to all men. OK, and it's really important that you help guide the agency so that we can position the website in front of your target audience. Obviously, this significantly um, affects things like the user experience of the website, how the design process might work, um, how workshops and focus groups might happen. So it's really important that we, we know this up front. On the flip side, your website might actually have multiple target audiences. So you might have um, in, a, in a school and education uh, sector, you might have um, pupils, teachers, senior leadership team, uh, parents and governors. That's five different user groups for uh, maybe a school website. And actually it's important to know that and to start to put them in some sort of hierarchy so that we can make sure that we address um, the needs of, of each user group on the website. So for example, for a parent of a pupil in a school, it's really important that they can just get onto the website and maybe find the, the, the calendar page to see what's on. Um, whereas actually for a governor, they might want to find out about the policies of the school. So we need to address all user groups, but of course there's a, a priority in, in how we do that. So tell us a little bit about your target audience and um, if you have several of those, how you might want to um, prioritise some over others. OK, so the next part is what, uh, what what's the state of your current website if you have one? So share with us the, the website address of the current website so that we can have a little look. Um, but more importantly, what are uh, the pain points? What is driving you to say that we're going to replace that website? So it might be um, that, you know, actually using the content management system is really cumbersome. Um, you know, adding content is really difficult and time consuming. Um, or alternatively, um, maybe the workflow doesn't work for your business now. So actually now content needs to be uh, curated and approved in a totally different way than it was uh, maybe two years ago. Um, so actually these are the pain points that um, are good to highlight in the brief. And the reason for that is because what you can then do is allow the agency to come back on this brief and say, we're going to address those pain points by doing X, Y and Z. So if your pain point is the fact that the CMS is really cumbersome, difficult to use and slow, then allow us to suggest maybe some CMSs which are going to be really intuitive and easy to use. Or alternatively, if the workflow doesn't work for you anymore, allow us to suggest a CMS which allows for workflow management. Um, so that just allows the agency to kind of come in with some ideas, to be creative um, and to address those main pain points that, um, that you have. And also as well, though the website um, is soon to be rede redeveloped, um, it might be that you still like particular aspects of it. So therefore, tell us if, if there's things which you might not want to change and you want to keep in place. Um, they, they, they might have a different design, but you might like the way that they function. So again, that's a useful thing for us to know uh, within this brief. So the next part is objectives and measuring success. I'm a big believer in um, agencies working with clients to actually not just deliver a product and service, but actually to meet objectives and to look back retrospectively and say, yep, yeah, we've actually ticked all of the boxes there. We've met the objectives and here's how uh, we've measured that. So let me kind of delve into that a little bit more. So um, 
your objectives might be to um, reduce uh, the, the time that the website takes to load, for example. And then the way that you'll measure that is you'll say, right, I would like to ensure that when we run our new website through a page speed tool by Google, um, that we've got a, a page speed score of, of 70% or higher. So that's a really clear way of saying, here's the objective, and I'm gonna put a number to how we're gonna measure that. And then we allow the agency then to, uh, to work to that standard. And then once the website's delivered, to look back and to say, here, uh, here's the result, actually, we've got it to 80%, for example, um, and we're gonna keep monitoring that maybe on an ongoing basis. So this is really important because we're not just, you know, uh, agencies don't get involved in projects just to deliver another website. We, we, we're quite, um, I, I guess, success driven in that we wanna look back and say, actually our work has achieved something. Another common thing that we find uh, at the moment, especially um, in light of the current, uh, current circumstances, is that people are wanting to uh, increase the automation from their website. So they might at the moment have a team of people who are doing lots of things manually. And it's fair to say when you're um, juggling lots of plates um, that, that actually you might well drop one. So let's allow the website to automate things and to make your life easier. So um, the objective might be to auto automate a particular workflow or a process that the website undertakes for you. And the way that we're going to measure that is we would like um, service inquiries to be down by 10% or calls to our call centre to be down by 20%. Again, these are measurable ways to make sure that the agency has met your objectives and hopefully exceeded them as well. OK, this is um, a part of the brief now, which um, a lot of people get stuck on, I'll be honest, um, and, and one which we, we often help our clients with. So um, the website features. So this is where you get into the nitty gritty as to what the website actually needs to do. So how should it function? Um, and the reason for um, th this image, just to explain, because it's, it's a bit of an odd one, <laughs> um, is, you know, I, I kind of um, like this to, um, you know, a three, four year old or five year old child um, like like one of mine who you know constantly asks questions you know so my my four-year-old girl Phoebe um, she'll always ask me but why daddy but why and how and why and, and it just goes on and on and, and you can answer the question 10 times and she's still asking why and that is kind of the pr approach that um, you know a lot of agencies take um, especially here at, at Webbox so you might say to us initially I know the website needs to have e-commerce functionality. That's great. That's the pillar um, functionality piece. And then we're going to drill into that. So how should that work? Do you need it to integrate with a stock management system? Does it need to integrate with an ERP system for order management? Um, when do automated emails get sent out upon order confirmation, basket abandonment? Um, how are you going to accept payments? Is that Stripe through SagePay, through PayPal? Uh, how are you going to charge for shipping? Is that a fixed fee? Is it free? Is it by weight, you know, percentage of order? And you can start to understand the analogy now of a, of a child always saying, but why, why, why? Uh, that's, that's what our, our job is. You know, we need to uh, drill down into your requirements. So in this section, I would encourage you to put in your requirements at a high level. OK, so if your website needs to have a content management system, tell us about that. If it needs to be e-commerce, great. Uh, if it needs to have a really quick checkout, that's great. Um, if it needs to be mobile compatible, you know, th those are the kind of things. Keep it high level. And then as you build partnerships with agencies and go down that road of gaining proposals, allow the agency to get into the nitty gritty with you. You know, some agencies uh, might not take that approach. And on, on the flip side, um, some organisations might not want that approach. But we found that approach uh, generally works really well to have that kind of collaborative um, open communication piece where you know, we can drill into your requirements and really get to the nitty gritty. And what we'll find is your list of features, which might have started you know, this long, will end up becoming a scope of work, which is many times larger. Um, and that is just a natural process of, um, of, of how we define the, the website's functions. Coupled with that, 
Um, I want to touch on the fact that um, the website might need to integrate with a third party. And this is something which, if I'm honest, a lot of website briefs omit. Um, and it's really important that the, the agency knows this because it's another qualif qualification criteria for the agency. So really important to say if the website needs to integrate with a third party. And if you know this, whether it's uh, maybe through an API or whether it's just uh, an embed code that you'll provide to us. So let's put that in reality. Um, there might be a newsletter sign up uh, feature on the website and you might use MailChimp for that. Now we know that we can just get some embed code from MailChimp and put it on the website and that will create a form which we can then style. That's quite straightforward. On the flip side, you might have a bespoke ERP system with an API and you know a documentation to go with that and it needs to um, push products to the website and, and orders need to be pushed back to the ERP system. And actually it's really important that we know that from day one and that we've ideally got your API documentation so that again as agencies we can qualify ourselves and say yeah we've definitely got the capability to do this uh, or no maybe it's not a project for us. And associated to that is any automation. So this is a, a big request of, of a lot of our clients at the moment where they're starting to get the website to do more of their business process than ever before. So whether that's kind of automated email pathways um, or kind of order flows or whatever it might be, um, if you're aware of what you want, then it's good to put that in the brief. Alternatively, if you're not sure, but you want to move towards automation, then again, highlight that in the brief to say, we're not quite sure how this is gonna work, but we are trying to move towards a fully automated model and we'd encourage uh, you to suggest ideas as to how that might work. Um, and again, allow the agency to, to be creative and to bring their expertise to the table. Okay, um, the next part of a brief, I'd love to see uh, a little bit more in briefs about content. So um, this, this might start with um, you saying, we're not quite sure at the moment, you, you might need some help defining this. Um, on the flip side, you might say, that we definitely know we need 15 to 20 pages or we've got 2000 products that need to be migrated from our current site or whatever it might be. If you could give us a little bit of a flavour as to uh, the, the content requirements of your, your website, then that is really helpful at this stage. Coupled with that, um, you know, whether you require the agency to write the content for you or maybe suggest a copywriter who could write it for you, um, or maybe just give you some content strategy. So we might kind of, um, you know, get involved in, in kind of how, what the, the tone of, of voice that your content uses um, and kind of do a workshop with you, etc., to just give you a bit of direction. Um, so there's lots of ways that that could work, but again, it's really good for you to um, uh, communicate that with us and uh, just to, uh, yeah, confirm your requirements there. Um, and then finally, if you have a multilingual website, again, just a little bit of information about whether the translated copy will be provided to us, um, so it's going to be manually translated, or alternatively, whether you're looking to use an automated tool. Um, and I know people uh, don't favour it, but things like Google Translate and, and other ones like that. So that's um, content. Everyone's still uh, okay? Everyone's still alive? Hopefully. Uh, if you've got any questions, just a reminder, pop it in the chat uh, as we go through and I'll happily answer them at the end. Okay. So um, I'm going to move on to timeline now. So um, you might well have a definitive date in which the website must be live for. Uh, really important to kind of communicate that from day one, um, just to make sure that the agency can actually deliver the project by that date. Um, alternatively, um, and it's also quite a nice thing to read this in briefs, you might actually just be happy for the agency to suggest a suitable timeline. Um, and that could just be based on their experience and, and to say, right, you know, we think it's going to be four to six months um, and we put a project plan together based on that. Um, so, yeah, if you have one, please specify it um, or alternatively, um, just make it clear that the agency can suggest their timeline. Okay, so everyone's got their poker face on and uh, the conversation then moves to budget. You know, um, the, some of the best briefs I've written um, 
are all about transparency. You know, um, when when I read a brief, um, they they'll just say this is what we need. This is how the project's going to run. Here's the time scale. Here's the budget. Here's the project team, and everything is laid on the table from day one. And that is what I love. And the reason I love it is because on on the return. That's how uh, Webbox as an agency and hopefully many other agencies work. We want there to be this transparent relationship. Um, so it is really important that you do share with us um, the budget for the project. But there's a couple of reasons why I ask this, and I'm going to just go into this in a bit more detail um, to kind of justify the, the reason for asking this. I think first and foremost, as a qualification criteria on both sides, um, the, if the agency sees that a budget has been defined for the project, uh, the agency will look upon that as, as the, the company have set this budget aside and that they are serious about the project happening. So that's a good thing from the agency's point of view. On the flip side, it allows the agency to qualify themselves. So for example, if your budget is 10k, but the agency doesn't undertake projects less than 30k, just to use uh, some random numbers, then actually that allows the agency to come back and to self-qualify themselves to say, really sorry, but we can't undertake this project due to the budget constraints. So again, it reduces the time that you're going to waste by um, seeking proposals from several agencies. Um, the, the other thing to consider here is, um, you know, the, the, the kind of, misconception I guess is that if you release your budget and make that available from day one that an agency is just going to quote that figure um, and that's just not the way that it works um, the, the way actually that an agency will look upon that is how much value can we deliver within that number so for example if your budget is is higher then uh, an agency might say, do you know what, we're going to put more time aside for UX design and workshops and focus groups to really get under the skin of your requirements and what your users want. And we're also going to look at your tone of voice and how we position the copy on the website, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And we might come up with some, some ideas that you might not have thought about to, again, just add more value to the functionality of this website. On the flip side, your budget might mean that you can't get everything that you want um, and therefore it allows the agency to say here's what we can develop within phase one and within your budget and then everything else could be looked at as a, as a phase two um, at a later stage. So actually releasing this figure shouldn't be a game of, of you know who drops their poker face first um, but actually the start of a transparent relationship between agency and client. Um, just one other thing to touch on, it's worth um, not only um, confirming budget, but also what that includes. You know, generally speaking, uh, a budget might be for the initial project and then exclude things like ongoing services, such as uh, hosting and backup, for example. And it might also exclude um, ongoing support. Um, so it's just worth putting that little bit of clarity in just so the agency knows um, what to uh you know, what's actually included in that figure. Okay, um, next part of the, the brief. Um, we'd love to know more about your competitors and kind of main players in the sector. Um, and the reason I kind of um, separate those um, is because actually your competitor might well be different to, you know, the top players in your sector. So if you can separate them, um, it's really helpful for you to do that. So the reason we want to look at that is because we all want to look at their website to see what they're doing, to see how they position themselves, but also not to, to copy what they're doing, but to ensure that we're delivering a project which is um, elevating you above what your competitors are doing at the moment. And coupled with that thought is just general websites that you like the look of. So this doesn't need to be sector specific. So, for example, you might well just say, um, I love the BBC News website, for example, because it's really clear and it's got a great colour palette. I can find what I'm looking for quickly. Um, that is that's really helpful information for, for the agency to know. OK, coming towards the end now. So 
Um, it's always useful to know who the main points of contact are for the project. Um, and the reason I say that is because ultimately this is about relationship. This is about uh, people working with people. So this needs to go two ways. Uh, this is all about uh, who the agency will be working with on the organisation side, uh, who will be the day-to-day -day point of contact, etc. Uh, who will be making decisions um, which might relate to the functionality or design of the website. And on the flip side, then that gives the agency an opportunity at a later stage to introduce their project team and who will be the day-to-day -day point of contact from the agency side. So again, this needs to work both ways, but in the brief, uh, it'd be good to know who your points of contact are. Um, and the next part is how the process is going to work. So it's really nice, just following on from this kind of transparent uh, point I made earlier, that you um, just re release all, I guess, about the process. So if you have a scoring matrix, for example, as to how you're going to score the proposals, um, it would be good for that to be in the brief. Um, if you just have a, a basic process whereby you want proposals submitted by a date, you're going to review them by a particular date and you're going to have presentations on a date. You know, it's good just to share that information with the agency just so that they know what to expect. Um, and also the, the dates that they need to work towards. A again, it's something which is missed from, from a lot of briefs that, uh, that I read. Um, so if you need a proposal back to you by a particular date, Again, just make us uh, aware of that so that we can work towards that date for you. Um, and also coupled with that, um, what do you want agencies to come back to you with? Um, this is, again, something which um, I find is omitted from quite a lot of briefs. Um, do you simply just want a proposal? Uh, do you want a rough cost because you're uh, looking to apply for a grant? Uh, do you want to, to meet us first? Uh, you know, what is your process? What is the deliverable that you want uh, us to come back to you with? Um, so to give you an example, one we had recently, um, you know, an organisation said to us, um, we'd like you to submit a proposal and that proposal should include three case studies and three points of contact or, or references so that we can uh, contact those three people. So that's a really specific and good way to do it so that we know what we need to deliver back to you um, so that there's a, there's a transparent process. OK, so that is everything that I wanted to go through today in terms of what should be included within a website brief. And I really hope it's been useful. Um, but I'm going to go one step further. I've written a website brief document which um, gives you a little bit more information about the, the why, who and how and it goes into a bit more detail about expectations on both sides and it then gives you a template for you simply to populate. Um, and the reason I've done that is because I know what it's like when you've just got a blank bit of paper and um, someone's asking you to write a brief and you might not be sure where to start. So hopefully that template is really useful um, and you can take it away and start to populate it. So I will be sharing that with you shortly after this webinar. And also I wanted just to extend an offer. So I'm not, um, this is not a, um, you know, a sales call. This is simply a, a genuine offer to help. If you're writing a brief at the moment and you want me to have a look over it personally, I am genuinely happy to do that. Um, I'm not going to push Redbox on you and, uh, and say we'll quote for the project. I'm genuinely going to give you some impartial advice on uh, the best way to write that brief and to position it to agencies. So if you want my, uh, my help, please use the email address there um, and I'll be more than happy um, to, to aid with that. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to, um, to put them in the chat and I'm just going to have a couple of minutes now to go through those. Um, I can see there's a few there already, so I'm just going to pull them up. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so please, um, please fire them in. I've had some sent to me um, privately and some to everyone, so I'll go through. Uh, I'll go through these now. Okay, so let's take um, 
do, 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 do. let's take one from Victoria. So would you recommend creating a rough site map or a pure list at this point? Okay, so um, in terms of content and pages, I think at this point I would, I would say a pure list is, is the best way to go. The reason for it is I think the agency then should bring expertise to creating that site map. And it comes back to um, the hierarchy of content. So, for example, um, you know, links such as uh, About Us um, are starting now to become a link which appears in the footer on a lot of websites. But traditionally, they would always be in the header. So I think we need to collaboratively work together, agency and client, to look at what's best for your company and for your target audience um, and create the sitemap together. So I'd say a pure list um, at this point, Victoria. Um, okay, so one from Francine, how would you go about finding agencies? Ha, <laughs> very good question. Um, do you know what? Um, I personally would say recommendation goes a long way. Um, I think if you're gonna, you know, uh, do the traditional open yellow pages, and obviously now, you know, current day is just Google uh, web design agencies, you're going to get a plethora of information. And to be quite frank, um, those agencies might not suit your project. So I personally would recommend that you, you find agencies through referral from people who have used an agency in the past and had a really good experience. Um, and, and the project might also be similar to you. Um, second, second with that is uh, look for agencies that are active and sharing your values. So actually, if you are going to go and look around, just ensure that the agency um, is shouting about the things which also your organisation are passionate about. Uh, I think the values piece is a, is a really important uh, part of, of this mix. OK, um, question from Sally. Um, should you expect to pay for proposals or presentations from each agency and how do you work with this? Uh, very good question. Um, I, I think it, just, it depends on the, the scale of work. So we have been involved in, uh, in pitches and proposals and presentations where a company will set aside a budget for that to happen. And that budget just covers our time to maybe come up with design concepts and a pitch to actually present to them. Um, from an agency side, um, that shows that the organisation is, is genuine about proceeding with the right agency and doesn't want to take advantage of you know their time and ideas on the flip side i think one thing that website uh, that webbox is um genuinely passionate about is working really closely with clients to help them define their requirements and that's not something which we we charge for so when you when you kind of say how do you work with with this if i speak personally from Webbox's uh, side of things, um, it would be to do that consultative approach uh, without any fee, because really we want to get to know you more and to find out more about your requirements um, and to help you with writing this brief and then uh, we'll come back to you with a scope of work and that isn't something which we, we charge for. Um, so yeah, another good question. I think that is highly dependent on the company and also the agency's qualification criteria. Um, another question I've um, I've had just sent directly to me is, um, when is the right time to send out uh, a brief to selected agencies? Um, so this is this is another good one because um, timing is key. Um, you you want to make sure that the brief is is written and sent out to agencies once the company has complete buy-in of, of the project going ahead. Um, you know, one, one thing which um, can be frustrating to agencies is, is when briefs are sent out um, and they're sent out because, um, you know, someone's been asked to tentatively, you know, gain quotes for a project, which, if we're honest, is likely not to go ahead. Um, so I think timing is a key part um, and I would just encourage you to, to just think about that um, so that when you're writing the brief that the, the organisation is bought into it prior to it going out to, uh, to agencies. Okay, if you've got any other questions, feel free just to pop them in the chat 
Um, I'll keep an eye on it just for one minute before we wrap up. That's great. Uh, thank you so much for submitting your questions. I think I've got one more sent to me directly, which I'll come back to you on uh, directly after this. But thank you so much for uh, joining me today. I genuinely uh, appreciate it. And I hope that uh, the webinar and also the guide, which I'll share with you shortly, will be really helpful and valuable to you. Um, just to reiterate, if you do want my help, I'm genuinely happy um, to help. So my contact details are here. Let's get involved on social as well using the hashtag webboxwebinar. Webinar. I hope you've really enjoyed it. So thank you so much.